Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about some a topic that I'm very familiar with all of you. Some point in your life, it's about failure. I've got a lot shared with you. We may we may fail on giving our homework, handing our homework, finish our housework, or we fail to hand in a project. That may happen, or we may fail in an election. Or a sales target, and when you fail, what do you feel? How will you feel? Yeah, okay, same. Okay, I feel depressed, and I don't want to accept the responsibility of my failure. And what will I do? I blame I blame on everyone except myself, right? Okay, um, so. I don't know what 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 will you do for that. Actually, on the surface, failure is like a setback for everyone, for yourself. But if you, in reality, if you really learn from it and move forward with it, you actually can create a new page in your life. So I encourage every one of you. To redefine your own failure. So today I'm going to share with you three points on failure, redefining your failure. Number one, admit you fail and get up quickly. Number two, negative comment can be an inspiration rather than a failure. It's the key for you to open another door. Number three, failure can be a chance for you to rethink the impossible norms. That a lot of people think failure on that subject is usual. So I'm going to talk about it one by one. So number one, admit you fail and get up quickly. From what I know, unless we admit we fail. We learn from it. We'll keep making the same mistake over again. That's what happened in life. If you don't learn the lesson, life will teach you once again on the same lesson, on the different circumstances. For me, what happened after two years I graduated from college in university? I started my first business, and the only reason I started my own business is because I want to be the successful guy. So, with the help of greed and overconfidence, and one year later, I'm three hundred thousand dollars in debt. That's a lot of money for a young graduate. What did I do? Of course, I blame it on everyone except myself. I cried for a whole month at home, and then at the end, I found out what I can do is not cry, is to accept my failure. Accept my own responsibility. Then I wipe off my tears. Okay, I say to myself, I am in rock bottom. The only way I can go is up, right? The snow more down. So I pick myself up, swallow my pride, go find myself a job to slowly pay off my debt. And it's a humbling experience because after you pay off all every month, well, actually at the first day of the month, after I pay off all my necessary payment, I only have two thousand Hong Kong dollars left, and that teach me a lot of lesson how to survive. And you understand, two thousand in Hong Kong is not a lot for food, traveling, and everything. So I learned a lot. But I learned my lesson. I admit it, and I know it's a lesson I need to learn. So when it comes a time that I start my second business, well,、uh, which is the business that I I have now, I try to stay humble. Okay, I'm still learning. But one thing I learned is I don't borrow any money to do business. That sounds crazy to not borrow any money to do business. But guess what? You can always get a good night's sleep when you're running a debt-free business. 
So my lesson I learned is admit my own failure, get up quickly, and that's the mindset for me to go on for the redefine failure. Number two. Negative comment can be an inspiration rather than a failure of yourself. It's the key to open another door. Listen to those negative comment because they have a message in there. It's not really a failure for it. A few years ago, we started a new electronic courses for students. It was a very successful course because a lot of students enrolled. And what happened? After the course finished, I talked to those students a few weeks after. I talked to them, I say, hey, did you learn, did you use what you learned in my course at home or at school? They say, no, absolutely no, no. I say, why? Well, because they say our parents or students or the teachers don't allow us to do um, soldering. Soldering is like a hot, a hot things, and then you you put you you actually melt the electronic parts and the wire together. Because the parents or the adults think they will burn up the whole school or the house. So I say, wow, that's that's incredible. That's incredible that you cannot use any of my things. So I was not happy with this comment at all. And I think this is my own failure on myself, even though no solution has been put forward yet. So I went back to my office. I talked to my in-house engineer. I asked him, we need to come up with something that is inexpensive and is easy for students to use without soldering. And his answer to me is, there's nothing like this exists. Then I say, great, so we're going to find a solution for that. So after, after a few weeks, after a lot of trial and errors, we came up with a new product, it's called Paper Circuit. It's using paper, copper stickers, metal, um, metal buttons, and also some clips that clip into the electronic parses, and let kids to assemble the things together without using soldering, and they can do a lot of new creation on that. And many schools are using it now to teach electronics. And if I don't listen to those negative comments, I would have missed out a great chance to, to make the electronic teaching a step forward. Number three, failure can be a chance for you to move forward with a challenge to rethink the impossible norms. Two years ago, we decided to create our own star maps, which you can look at the star with the constellations. And I love astronomy since I was little, very little. And actually our second business was started on astronomy, which is more amazing in a place in Hong Kong. And so I find a designer. Of course, that designer don't know anything about astronomy. And he helped me to, to draw out the universal, um, universal prototype for the star maps. So after two months, he worked on this star maps. And one day, I came to him and said, uh, I want to make some changes. I want to add something on the constellation of Orion, which is a, which is a constellation that is, should be quite easy to find. He searched for three minutes, and he couldn't find it. Then he made a comment that I will never forget in my life. He said, I worked on this for two months, and I couldn't even find a riot. This star map is supposed to be for a beginner, and I can't even do it. And listen, this is just a stupid, useless design, which I can sum up with one word for you. It's a failure. That's a main, major design failure in the star maps. And this happened according to an ex-chairman of an international astronomy society. This failure, design failure, has been around for decades. And no one and everyone think this is normal. So no one rethink any of this at all for decades. And you know what? The easiest thing I can say to my designer is just shut up and do it. 
because that's, that's the normal. This failure has been around for years. Instead, I say, I thought for a few seconds, I say, you know what? You're right. This is a really stupid, useless design. Then I go back for three, suspend three or four days thinking of a solution of this that case problem. And sure enough, well, luckily enough, we came up with a, I came up with a solution, and that changed the whole game plan of the of the whole, what the summer can use, and it amazed a lot of professionals. So, so it's rethinking to challenge your the impossible norms is to redefine the failure for yourself. So next time when you fail your housework, homework, project, elections, and you fail your sales target. Say to yourself, realize this is a sure step for your final goal, and you will amaze. Well, actually, I should put this out. And you will amaze with what you can experience through that. And one last thing I want I want you to take home is redefine your failure yourself, not by what the society thinks. Thank you.